lesson, we're going to be looking at the three main perspectives within sociology. So the first one we're going to take a look at is the functionalist perspective. So the main functionalist theorists are Durkheim, Parsons and Merton. Um, within functionalist theory, it is thought that society is interconnected kind of in the way that the body, the body is. So for instance, every organ within the body, the brain, the heart, everything within the body needs to work together in order for everything to function correctly. Durkheim, Parsons and Merton say that society acts like this. This is known as social equilibrium or social harmony. So examples of this are the family. So the family is for primary socialization of children. It's supposed to nurture them and socialize them, teach children how to behave within a functional society. Next, you have um, education. So education is a way of passing on knowledge, skills, culture, teaching children or adults a way that they need to act within the society. Next is crime. So crime is about social regulation. So crime is about teaching morals. It's about teaching social order. And it's about punishing those who do not conform to the way that society is thought that it works best. Next is religion. So religion creates a collective conscience. Religion is about showing the ability to have moral guidance, the ability to worship a higher power. Um, and religion brings people together in this way. Another one we can also look at is economics. So economics, let me just write a little bit about economics. So economics is a way of teaching people um, about distribution of goods, distribution of services, distribution of money, generally just a way of having society getting the right amount of goods, services, money in order to act in an equal society in social equilibrium. Um, so the functional perspective is known as macro sociology. What this means is society on a big scale. So this means countrywide, worldwide, looking at the way that people act on such a big scale rather than a smaller scale. The next perspective we're going to take a look at is the complex perspective. As you can see, this is also known as macro sociology. What macro sociology means, as I've just said, is um, society on a large level. It's not looking at small society, it's looking at the way that a world or a country acts as a whole. The main um, conflict theorist is Karl Marx. You may have heard him before, as it's quite a well-known name. What Marx says is that society is about people having their own interests, working for personal good, only interested in gaining for themselves, which is obviously quite the opposite to the functionist perspective. Marx said that society is about competition rather than working together. It's about conflict. It's about power. It's not about working together. It's about working for yourself. And Marx says the people who mainly do this are the upper class. And he calls these the bourgeoisie. He sees that the bourgeoisie control everything and control the poor people. And he sees that the bourgeoisie, whilst they are minority, they control the majority within the world. Now, how can this be fixed? How does Marx say that the conflict perspective can be fixed? Marx says that con the conflict perspective can be fixed through communism. Communism is the opposite to capitalism. So Marx says that current society works within capitalism. This means that things are not distributed fairly. People are in charge. We have poor people. We have rich people. The opposite of this is communism. So Marx says that a revolution is needed and communism it will take place instead of capitalism. What communism means is that everything is distributed equally. So everyone will get the same wage, the same job, the same benefits within life. And this is the way to fix capitalism or to fix the conflict perspective as a whole. Now, of course, we've just looked within the functional perspective how education and religion create a functional society. According to Marx, education and religion actually do the opposite. Education, rather than instilling um, ideas into children that make them act in a certain way that helps society function, what Marx says is it actually instills ideas that make children conform to a certain type of society rather than function within it. He also says that religion is used in the exact same way as a way to manipulate people, make people have the same sort of beliefs, which makes them kind of easier to control, rather than the functionist perspective which says that this makes everyone act in a happy and functional way. And the last perspective we're going to take a look at today is the symbolic interactionist perspective. 
This is the opposite of the other two perspectives. This one is micro so sociology. What this means is it's not looking at a worldwide or countrywide scale. It's looking at small groups of people, how people behave within their own families or friends or clubs that they are part of, rather than on a worldwide or countrywide basis. The main themes within this perspective are Semmel, Mead and Goffman. What these theorists say is that human behaviour is influenced by definitions and meaning, and this is done through symbolic interactions. I've put this little image over here on the side just to show what I mean by this. So we've got some certain symbols here which you might recognise from brands from America. We've got the OK sign, things that we recognise, but there's also symbols that a lot of people recognise that we don't. So these symbols could be if someone is part of a certain group or cult, then they may have a symbol or a logo that is part of that group. That is a way that that symbol makes these people interact or make these people belong within a certain group. So this is what is meant by symbolic interactions with others, symbols, things that mean something as being part of a group. A small group though, not like a world or countrywide group. This is why this is micro-sociology. This, uh, theorist, this theory says that people are more interested in the way that the others around them see and interact with them. So this means we are more interested in the way that our peers see us or treat us. And this is known as the looking glass self. What this means is the way that people see, view or treat us directly reflects the way that we see ourselves. So I hope you've had quite a good intro introduction today to the three main perspectives of sociology. And next week we'll take a little look at each perspective on its own and look at it on more of a broader level, bringing in larger ideas and just getting a better definition and understanding of each one on a larger scale. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed the lesson and that's the end of the lesson. So I'll see you next week.